Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, this is just a quick introduction to the biogeochemical cycles, uh, and then just a little instruction kind of going through the, the water cycle, the hydrologic cycle. Um, the big picture here, which you started been reading about, is really focused on, on energy and focused on matter uh, in ecosystems. And where energy kind of flows as a direct line through ecosystems, matter is recycled. So it gets kind of cyclical. And the focus of, of matter is really looked at the biogeochemical cycles. Um, so just kind of talk about energy real quick, right? We know energy comes from the sun, right? Sun energy is absorbed by producers, right? Um, organisms that undergo photosynthesis. They convert that energy from light into usable chemical molecules, such as glucose and sugars, right? The glucose and sugars can be used for them to kind of live their lives, to build organic tissue, organic matter, and that organic matter can be passed down through the food chain, where you have primary consumers are eating the producers, secondary consumers are eating the primary consumers, right? And tertiary consumers are eating the secondary consumers. And that energy is passed directly down the food chain. Um, organisms, you know, at the kind of come to the end of their life, right? They die, their, their bodies are decomposed. So if you have a, a tertiary consumer, such as a, a bear um, is dead, it's decomposing, right? As that decomposition process takes place, the decomposers are getting energy from it. But what's going back into the earth are nutrients. So plants, although they're gaining nutrients from the organism that's being decomposed, they're gaining nitrogen and phosphorus and other materials as well. They're not really gaining energy. Plants don't get energy you know, from absorbing the, the nutrients from, um, from the soil. Plants get their energy from the sun. So the idea that energy goes as a direct line through ecosystems, matter cycles, uh, and focusing on those cycles are the biogeochemical cycles. Um, when we look at these cycles, we really want to focus on reservoirs. Uh, we have a, a few different reservoirs where, where just basically um, where, the, where this matter can be stored. Um, so a couple of different reservoirs here, you have the atmosphere. So some of these um, chemicals, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, um, water vapor, right, can be stored in one reservoir, which is the atmosphere. Um, other times the material can be stored in the hydrosphere, such as dissolved oxygen, dissolved carbon dioxide in water. Um, what, these chemicals can be uh, stored in the reservoir of the biosphere, which is in living tissues. So the carbon, the nitrogen, the phosphorus that's in us, that's in plants, that's in all living things. And then also some of these materials can be stored in the lithosphere, which are basically the earth, right? Geology, rock, soil, sediment, and so forth. So really when we look at these cycles, we, we focus on the movement of these materials from one reservoir to the next. Um, our cycles here that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the water cycle in this presentation, and then the next three presentations will be the nutrient cycles, the carbon cycle, nitrogen, and phosphorus cycle. Uh, water cycle is pretty straightforward. We'll get to that in a second. Just a quick thing on the carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle, right? The reason why we focus on those cycles is those are really the elements that make up living things. If you think back to like chapter two in the Cho Cho Chan Chomp stuff, right? Carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, phosphorus, right? Those are all the atoms that make up um, make up living things. So following the carbon cycles, following well, how do organisms get the carbon to build carbon compounds? Where do we get our nitrogen from for our amino acids or our DNA or our RNA? Where do we get our phosphorus from for our DNA, for um, ATP as well, for RNA? Um, so that's really kind of where these cycles originate from or what their, their focus is. A water cycle, really, really straightforward. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail here because you had this probably back in second grade, right? But what happens, water store, stored in the oceans, water stored in lakes and rivers and streams, right? Heat hits it, heat causes evaporation. Evaporation is when water goes from its liquid state to its gaseous state. As that nice, warm gas water vapor is rising, it's going to cool. And as it starts to cool, the molecules get closer and closer. And, and what happens is condensation. Condensation continues to happen until you have so much moisture locked up in a condensed cloud that it can't really hold anymore. And that's when precipitation takes place. Precipitation, rain, snow, sleet, um, hail, all different types of precipitation, right? The, those 
molecules, those water molecules in various forms are collected as snow or collected as rain. Um, that can run in surface water, kind of running in lakes, rivers, and streams. It could be groundwater, kind of absorbed into the ground. Um, but eventually that water is going to cycle through, eventually end up you know, in some type of reservoir, whether it's uh, an aquifer, which is underground, a lake, a river, a stream, um, or even back to the ocean. Uh, and that kind of completes the cycle. So again, the water cycle is pretty straightforward. There's just a little bit more detail. Again, you have your evaporation, precipitation, um, and you have your runoff, right? We have surface runoff. We have groundwater movement, which is underwater. I mean, sorry, underground. Um, and obviously, that's kind of where filtration comes in as well, helps to kind of purify our water. The one extra term that's on this slide compared to the last slide is just transpiration. And, and that's really nothing nothing complicated. It's really just evaporation from plants. So we know plants have their, their stoma, uh, their stomata that they can open up. When they open up, they allow for gas exchange. And in that gas exchange process, water can evaporate out. Uh, that product process is just known as transpiration. So you can group the transpiration and evaporation together when we start kind of talking about this concept. And that's the water cycle. Thanks for listening.